Um, Just scoot in. <laughs> so what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, I'm Greg. Nestor. Nestor? Yeah. Nice to meet you. De donde eres? De Guatemala. De Guatemala. Uh, what's the best part of your day these days? Getting to the eat. <laughs> that's what it's about, right? Yeah. yeah so, right. <laughs> well, that's my second question. What's the hardest part of your day? I think the hardest part of the day is just getting up in the morning. Um, you know, being out here, you know, is, is really hard. But I think it's mitigated by the fact that I get to serve this community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So going hungry might be yeah. the worst part of it. Yeah, because like, I'll eat maybe one meal a day and that's it. And then like I'll eat, not eat for a couple days and then like I'll eat another meal because it's so hard to get so money for food. Right. So like in a regular day, how much money might you get sitting here? 10, 15 bucks. What's, this is just kind of a simple question, what's the best part of each day for you? The best part is, well, for my day is I'd say about dinner time. When I can have my dinner and I can sit down like and smoke a blunt and fall asleep. <laughs> you know, that's probably the best time, is, like when I'm not getting woken up by the police or anything. Okay. And then uh, what's the worst part of your day? The worst part of my day is being homeless and having other homeless people come up to me and ask me for my things that I'm working for to get inside. And it happens every day on the continuous. So, I'm not really trying to get a girlfriend because, like, every time I get a girlfriend, they always want things. <laughs> and I don't have things for them besides just myself, so. <laughs> What's your most valuable possession that you have, that you have with you all the time, or? My laptop. <laughs> your laptop. <laughs> My laptop. How is the homeless situation in Berkeley right now? Well, right now, man, you know, like I said, I haven't been here probably in a month or two. But when I left, when I left a month or two ago, there wasn't that many homeless people like it is right now today. I mean, I'm seeing tents on the sidewalks now. I never seen sidewalk, uh, tents on the sidewalks since I've been coming out here. So, in your words, what's the state of the homeless community in Berkeley right now? Like, how's it going, basically? Well, basically what we're dealing with here at Berkeley is we're dealing with a broken system that's based on charity. They're more interested in handing people a, a, a sandwich and a pat on the head mm -hmm. and telling you we'll see you tomorrow sort of thing. This system doesn't have any kind of a strategic plan mm -hmm. because... Mike Lee for mayor, heck yeah. Yeah. And so you said you were homeless for how seven, long? Seven years. Seven years? Yeah, San Francisco and then Berkeley. How, how old are you, man? 29. Oh, wow, you look so young. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's crazy. I was, I was going to school and I had a job and everything. I was doing really good. I just, like, my grades were too low, and then uh, I didn't get financial aid, so I couldn't go to school no more. They admit, they admit that homelessness it's gone up by 53%. Now, kitchen table common sense should tell everybody, now wait a minute, now we just spent $3 million on homeless services. Why is it that the population has gone up 53%? Not 2% or 3%, but 53%. If you had cancer, would you go to an auto mechanic and ask them for, <laughs> for a diagnosis? No. <laughs> no. No. Why is that? Because the auto mechanic isn't an expert on home, on, on your cancer. But you still got the cancer, and that's what these people do. This is exactly what they do. When they talk about homelessness, they don't go to the experts. They go to the auto mechanic. And they do these five-year studies and these ten-year studies, and they create this HMIS system and this system and that system, and they waste millions of dollars. And we still have homeless people. San Francisco is spending $284 million. And they have less of, and they have a little bit more of a clue than Berkeley does. And a lot of people, man, it's hard out here right now for a lot of people, man, because they don't have jobs. And then, you know, like I say, you have a lot of people using drugs right now. And so they need help, man. You know, you can't just throw them out there like that, man, because they need help. I mean, you know, somebody, everybody deserves a chance at least. Yeah, I mean, give a chance. And so you say Berkeley, the city doesn't understand who's out here and why they're out here. Yeah. And in your mind, what would you tell them? Who is out here and why are they out here? Well, basically, there's four, four different groups of homeless people out here, sort of thing. Because there's, you know, there's like 
Otis and maybe an RFD who has like substance abuse issues, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. There are <clears throat> there are <clears throat> people have mental health issues, mm -hmm. sort of thing, because the streets will drive you crazy. If you were bonkers when you hit the sidewalks, you'd be even crazy when you're doing this day to day survival sort of thing. The third type of people are what I call free spirits, those people who choose to live to be homeless. Those are, you know, in that group, but that doesn't, that's not a condemnation of them. I mean, that's what makes this country great, mm -hmm. is that you're able to do that. If we lived in a third world country, you'd be getting put up against the wall and shot, you know, freely choosing that. My problem with this group is that when they think that they're entitled to do whatever the hell they want to do, you know, that's not part of the social contract. You can't go sleeping in Starbucks. You can't go peeing in a guy's doorway and things of that nature. If you want to be a free spirit, you want to live, choose to live out on the streets, that's fine, far out. But you also have to recognize with that freedom comes also responsibilities. So the fourth group of people is a, is a group of people that needs to be prioritized. Those are people like myself who are senior citizens, you know, definitely youth. We have 3,000 students at Cal right now that are, that are homeless. Trying to go, trying to go, trying to carry a full class load, sort of thing. And so, would you say that your main personal goal right now is running for mayor? My main, yeah, my, well, I mean, within this campaign, the reason for this campaign is that we wanted to bring issues to the table to make sure that those got talked about. Yeah, what's a, you kind of already said this, but what's a life goal or a dream that you have right now? Just to get my son back. Yeah, I knew you could say that. <laughs> That's the most important thing. Yeah. And how about you? What's the goal that you have? Well, going back to the same things I was doing before, getting a job and going to school.